intent, but feeling as if it's already been addressed. Uh, let me say a word on it. Uh, I thank Senator Braun for his amendment. Uh, this amendment would require FDA to convene an advisory meeting of outside experts to review the use of a controversial methodology used in clinical trials for opioids. Is that it? Senator Braun, is that about what it does? Yes. Okay. Now, according to at least one organization, the Opioid Policy Research Collaborative, quote, the FDA has been putting new painkillers on the market based on improper studies that skew results in favor of approval. The methodology they're using was cooked up in private meetings with drug makers. The time for outside experts to examine this issue is long overdue, end of quote. Uh, this amendment builds on the Support Act, which requires the FDA to study this controversial methodology and come up with a plan to review all approved opioid drugs, and I would urge a yes vote on the amendment. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Senator Casey. Mr. Chairman, I wanted to speak on Casey number one, which will... Uh, okay, we stay on Braun number one. Let me see if we're any more on that. Braun one? I, I just would offer that I support Braun one for the reasons that you've just stated. The methodology that these uh, companies were allowed to use is deeply, deeply flawed and really fueled this epidemic. Further discussion on Braun one? Are not hearing any, uh, Senator Casey? <clears throat> Thanks very much. I wanted to speak on Casey number one, which I'd be Oh, I'm sorry. I, I promised Senator Braun that he would go. I'll be quick. Okay. okay. Braun Amendment number two, the Effective Act. Last year, FDA Commissioner Califf told me that the FDA lacks the authority to deny a new opioid on the basis that the new drug is not better or safer than other comparable drugs. Opioids are a unique drug class. They are essential in treating pain, but they are also some of the most dangerous drugs available. I offer this amendment with Senator Baldwin to give FDA the authority that Dr. Califf requested. My amendment would not remove any currently available drugs from the market when it comes to a class of drugs that has killed hundreds of thousands of Americans. FDA should have more discretion to ensure safety. Discussion of Braun two. Again, I think, I thank Senator Braun for, I just, my gosh, we should all be focused on this. Thank you for being so. I support this amendment. Um, it's a little bit different. This is a different standard, and I discussed this with my staff. We don't normally require this same, this would be an elevated requirement for a new opioid. But as I told my staff, when it comes to opioids, we have to treat them differently. When so many people are dying, uh, it would be, you know, naive to treat it the same way as we would treat a new statin. So I thank you for your willingness to think creatively, and I support this. Further discussion. Uh, I also support this amendment, uh, which would allow FDA to consider whether new opioids are safer or more effective than existing opioids when determining their approval. I think it makes sense. Further discussion of Braun two. Senator Braun. Final um, amendment number three, uh, Health Care Transparency uh, Price Act, is arguably the most important thing I think we need to discuss. I'm going to talk about it and withdraw it. I can tell you, when I tackled this same issue in my own company 15 years ago, until you get your own employees, all of us engaged as health care consumers, don't count on costs going down either from a government payor or through the private insurance system. When you go to the hospital, there's very little transparency on prices, leaving everyone guessing how much is it gonna be when you get your bill three months later in the mail. There's also a lack of transparency regarding the agreements. Probably the biggest level of opaqueness in anything we do in our healthcare system between big hospitals and insurance companies. Recently, we've seen examples where huge employers have found serious disparities and wasteful practices in their own plans, and they can't get to the bottom of it. My amendment would require hospitals to publish detailed files of all neg negotiated rates and cash prices between plans and providers, not estimates. It also codifies the transparency in coverage rule. And the bill provides group health plans the right to access audit, and review claims and counter data. I'll be withdrawing this amendment, as I said, but until we embrace something like this, 
across the, across the totality of health care, we're never going to lower costs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A clarification, Senator Braun, you're withdrawing the Third Amendment. Do you want votes on one and two? Yes, I do. Both those? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, further discussion on uh, uh, 3393. Mr. Chair. Senator Kane. Um, Kane Amendment 1, I'd like to call up, and I want to start by thanking both Chair Sanders and Ranking Member Cassidy for including a portion of my bipartisan Peer Support Act in today's markup. Uh, and I want to thank members of this committee, Senators uh, Murkowski and Braun and Baldwin, for supporting the amendment that I'm calling up. The goal of the bill is to provide support for the treatment of and recovery of individuals experiencing mental illness and substance use disorders. The provision that's included in today's markup, I don't need to speak about, but what this amendment does is includes provisions of something, uh, the Peer Support Act, it would include a provision to instruct the Department of Health and Human Services to conduct a study on state's screening processes for certifying peer support specialists, including provisions that may provide undue barriers to their certification. I bet most of you have had these discussions in your communities as you've gone and talked to folks who are working with those who are trying to recover from substance use disorder. And often what they tell you is, boy, the best help I got was from a peer support specialist who him or herself had a substance use disorder, has recovered, and now they are a great counselor and guide along the way to recovery. But a lot of states have barrier crime provisions that block the certification of individuals to become peer recovery specialists if they've been convicted of drug-related crimes. This doesn't mandate that states do anything, but it, it enables us to study the different state practices for allowing people who are successfully recovered to be peer recovery specialists, even, even if in the past they might have had some in, involvement with the uh, criminal justice system. So that's what this provision would do, just study the different state practices and hopefully bring forward some best practices that we can use going forward to make sure that we have the peer recovery specialists who are good at what they do. And I thank my colleagues for helping me with this. Uh, further discussion on Kane 1. Oh, comment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I Mr. Chairman, just, just a question for uh, Senator Kane, which is um, we've received some feedback on this amendment that there's some concern that, that there could be people that would misuse this relationship. Someone you know, is looking for um, being able to become a distributor of, of uh, harmful narcotics and so forth and would get to meet all of these people. And mm -hmm. when this person that was formerly uh, uh, um, hooked, uh, perhaps falls back into that difficulty that they know some other people, they're able to sell to, and that basically having someone who'd been an addict, um, meeting with other people trying to recover from addicts would create a situation where uh, you'd be encouraging more addiction. So I'm, I'm curious as to what your thought is on that and how you, how you deal with that issue. Certainly, I, that's a fair concern. So this does not mandate that states do anything. Um, and it would, it would allow a study by HHS to explore what different states are doing. Have they, has it worked? Have they had problems of the kind you described? If they've had those problems, how have they modified the program to allow the peer recovery specialists, but you know, guard against any of, the, any of those or other problems? Um, so it's sort of the gathering of what states have done on this to try to come up with the best practices so that we can take advantage of the recovered who want to be agents of others' recovery uh, and their desire to do that, um, but it would not mandate, you know, anything that would sort of run afoul of the concern that you raise. Further discussion, Senator Cassidy? Uh, it does, however, uh, tell HHS to 